Welcome to UFCU Dishfog Field, where we've got game two of the Class 5A Region 2 Championship Series. Cameron Kushwar and Jeff Power joining you live here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com. We've got the Woodlands at 35 and 3 versus Rockwall at 33 and 8. Now, these two teams met last night. In fact, Rockwall led the game 3 0 going into the sixth inning, and that's when the bats came alive for the Woodlands. They scored 12 runs in the next frame and went on to win the game 12 5. That's when they finally figured out Carter Lilly, the starter for the Rockwell Yellow Jackets. They'd had a few hits, a couple of walks throughout then, but that inning, six hits, three of them doubles, five walks, a couple of errors by the Rockwall defense there, mounted to 17 batters and 12 runs. That really was the story of the ball game, Jeff. Everything else kind of went by the wayside. That one half inning, that's all she wrote. So let's talk about the pitching matchup today. Kaysen Adams gets the start for Rockwall. Interesting fact about him. He was on the junior varsity last year. He's a senior this year. Coaches said he grew three inches over the summer and has really come into his own. You get that extra height on there. You, as a former pitcher, you know this. A little more leverage on your fastball. You're more intimidating to hitters. And he's going to have to come up, step up, and save his team today because they have to win this game or their season's over. How about Carter Hope, the pitcher for the Woodlands? He is their hope today. He is their hope, and we're going to see a lot of the same thing from Carter Hope as we did from his squad mate Ryan Burnett last night. We're just going to see it from the right-hand side. We're going to see a lot of fastballs, curveballs, and change-ups down in the zone, and hopefully for Carter Hope, he'll locate better than his mound mate did because Ryan Burnett didn't pitch great last night, but he got the win. Hey, Chris Andritzos, remember that name. He's only a sophomore. He's headed to Oklahoma. That's where he's verbally committed to. Had a big game last night, three for four, couple of doubles and a single. Really good game. Three runs driven in, two runs scored. He was instrumental in that big rally there. His big double is what got the scoring started for the Woodlands, and then he wrapped it up later in the inning. Really put the game out of reach because it was <laughs> a 6-3 to three ball game when he came up that second time. Another big double out into the outfield. And that was it. Two more runs scored. And Kendall Coleman, he's the one you want to watch when it comes to rock wall play center field. Really does a nice job up there, but he's got a good bat, too. He is going to the University of Iowa. He had a big night, hit the ball hard a couple times, and he just covered all that ground out there in center field. The other two outfielders just kind of let him go do his thing. He can really fly. Okay, we're going to hear from the coaches coming up next. It's the McDonald's pregame show. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. for a little, a McDonald's dollar menu. Meet Lucy. Lucy loves to shop. Lucy also loves to save. Luckily, Lucy can do both with her new First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card. Not only can Lucy save on that new dress, she can also get those new shoes, too. Apply today and take advantage of everything a First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card has to offer, including a 12-month 2.99% APR introductory rate. You really can shop and save. First Community Credit Union, official credit union of the Houston Texans. Up next for career day, quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well, did you save my dad hundreds with a discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! Discount double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. I don't know what to say. It happens. You play long enough. You play enough games. 
I guess this stuff is due to happen, maybe, but what a bad time for it. Coach, as a, as a, as a ball player and with your team right there, is it easier to bounce back after a loss like last night where you can just completely scrub it from your memory, or is it maybe easier to bounce back from like a one-run deficit, or is there really no difference at all? Either way, you just got to come back out and win your next game. Yeah, no difference for this group. You know, it, if you get beat 12-5, losing the whole game and just flat out dominated, that's probably easier to take. We're up 3-0, six outs away, so it did. It was a it was a kick in the gut. But these guys won't be phased. They got plenty of sleep. They're fine. They don't have any problem playing two today, and we'll be just fine. You were in this situation a couple of weeks ago against Plano. You had the do or die game three right there. So. Being in this situation again where you got to win or, you, or go home, is that an advantage for your team? You think that they've been there before, that they're not going to be phased? Maybe. We're hoping. I, I know the Woodlands haven't lost a playoff game yet, so they haven't played an elimination game. And we had a one-gamer in round one with Rowlett, so we played two elimination games so far and hopefully two more today. Coach Jeff Payne joining us here in the McDonald's pregame. Coach, thanks for the time. Best of luck today. Yeah, appreciate it. That was Rockwell head coach Jeff Payne. We'll be back with more of the McDonald's pregame show in just a moment. <laughs> Cheddar, bacon, onion. Yeah, it's uh, it's tremendous. What do you think about that chapter on subliminal messaging? Hey, I'm not really buying it. Fried. Yeah, it's been a pretty rough quarter. Tremendous. Say hello to McDonald's new. Tremendous. CBO. Smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO, the simple joy of tremendous. Yeah. The time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. New sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up. It's deep. And it's going to be gone. Legacy Sports Network brings you high quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff. Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone. Touchdown. This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. I appreciate it, Gerald. You guys, the legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay-per-view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. Joined by the Woodlands head coach, Ron Eastman. Coach, you're one game away from being in the state finals, and you really owe it all kind of to that one sixth inning last night with 12 runs. Talk about that inning, and your team just kind of exploded out there. It was kind of a surreal experience. You know, when Ryan gave up those three runs in the half before, went out to the mound and just said, let's minimize damage. You know, we've got a three-game series. We've got two innings left. Just relax and, and get out of this, and let's go see if we can swing the bats. And, um, you know, the guys, we had an approach in BP all week to how we wanted to approach in the first two times through the lineup. We didn't do a real good job. And about the third inning, or some, for some reason, we were able to relax. Uh, we were able to get some good looks, barrel the ball up, also make him work more. I think we had four or five walks that inning, too. We call them freebies. And so combination of, you know, well-placed hits and some timely, timely walks, we were able to string kind of a crazy inning together. Ryan Burnett struggling on the hill last night, but today you've got your really your one A ace, Carter Hope, out there, and he's going to show a little bit different style to these rock wall hitters there. How do you think he's going to go out and attack them, or, or rather, how do you want him to go out and attack them? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's too much of a different style. I mean, but you've got a righty-lefty combination. Both guys are, you know, fastball, curveball, changeup, and both of them, when they have their changeup going, um, can be very effective. Ryan didn't have a great change last night. Um, we weren't getting that low strike. And so he had to make an adjustment, and Rockwell, you know, hits the fastball up. We knew that coming in, and they were able to barrel up the fastball when we got it up in the zone. A couple changeups he left it up in the zone, and they're a good hitting team. Um, so, you know, Carter's going to bring the same thing. He's going to bring a, a hard-nosed mentality to the mound. He's going to pound the strike zone. Uh, he's got a good breaking ball. He's got a good changeup, and when he's got all three going, he's been very tough, very tough for us on the mound. 
Coach, are you going to manage this game any differently, knowing that you've got a game in hand and that there is the possibility of a second ball game today, or are you just going to go put it all out there on the table and just try to wrap this up here with the 1 o'clock first pitch? Well, I think, you know, we're going to try to wrap it up. We don't want to go to a game three. Uh, the only thing you've got to keep in your back of your mind is that game three, whereas winning game one, you have the luxury of deciding if you want to save a couple guys uh, for that game three if needed. Uh, whereas, you know, if you lose the first game, you don't have that luxury. you got to go out and you have to win game two to extend it to game three. So the way we're going to manage it is uh, the same. We're going to try to be relentless in everything we do, try to win every pitch um, in the back of our minds. So we may be, you know, maybe holding guys back depending on the situation on the mound. Thanks for the time, Coach. Best luck today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And now we'll be back after this break in the McDonald's pregame show. We'll come back and give you the starting lineups. That was quick. This was you. Hmm? You've been trying to get me to eat egg whites for years. You went and talked to McDonald's. <gasps> oh, an egg white delight McMuffin. <laughs> oh, I knew it. The new egg white delight McMuffin. Freshly grilled egg whites and creamy white cheddar. Also available on any of your favorites. It's another new way to love McDonald's. Mm, this is good. Yeah, it's better than good. Do you remember my last time? Oh, yeah. I put it. It's in the car. Mmm. Mm, that's good. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field, where the Rockwall Yellow Jackets at 33 and 8 facing the Woodland Highlanders at 35 and 3. You see the Woodlands on the defensive side. They'll be your home team today in the all-white uniforms, trimmed out in green. And Rockwall will be wearing the Baltimore Orioles look, if you will, black, orange, and white, orange tops. Let's get you their starting lineup. Uh, batting first, their leadoff batter, wearing number three, third baseman Brad Barnett. Wearing number four, left fielder Cole Ballou. Number 24, center fielder Kendall Coleman. The cleanup hitter is number nine, Carson Childers. He plays first. Catcher Garrett Moon wears number 25, batting fifth. Chris Glover is a DH. Wears number 22, batting sixth. Number 13 is Nick Lutzel. Number eight, Dustin Angel. And number two, Skyler Bean. Brad Barnett will be facing Carter Hope. And uh, Carter Hope's first pitch is fouled off to the left side with Carter Hope. We've got a 1.34 ERA. He's got four complete games this year, 52 and a third innings pitched, 7 and 0 record. He's a righty. He's headed to Oklahoma State wearing number 23. The 0-1 count to Brad Barnett. Outside. One ball, one strike. Just a bit outside. Beautiful day for baseball here. You see Barnett batting 336, an RBI, 18. Runs batted in, 472 on base percentage. Outside. Only one change on defense today for the Woodlands with Carter Hope pitching. They've got Josh Pruitt as their third baseman. The outfield remains the same. Colby Brown in left. Charlie Warren in center. Blaine Gillespie out in right. And the 2-1 pitch a bit outside. 3-1 and one now to Brad Barnett. On deck is Cole Ballou, the left fielder. It's a rock wall team that had a 3-0 lead yesterday, scored three runs in the fifth inning after being shut out the first four, but then they allowed 12 runs the next inning and lost the game 12-5. Ground ball to short, and it's a bad throw to first. Brad Barnett gets back to first base, thought about going to second, but didn't have any choice right there, but definitely an errant throw right there by Hillen Warren. The Woodlands committed one error last night. Obviously didn't come back to bite them. Right there, Barnett swinging on a 3-1 pitch. Carter Hope having trouble finding the strike zone to start that ball game and probably swung it, you know, like to have maybe seen him take on a 3-1 pitch. Hit the ball hard, but right to the shortstop, he just rushed the throw. All right, that's going to bring up Cole Ballou. So runner on, just underway here. Class 5A Region 2 Championship Series. The Woodlands won game one last night here, 12-5. This is game two if necessary. Game three will follow. The Woodlands, they've yet to lose a playoff game this postseason. Well, they haven't lost since April 12th. Cole Ballou lining that first pitch right back into the net. He hit a mammoth home run last night in the bottom of the sixth inning. They're going to have to be careful pitching to him. Yeah, that was uh, deep to center field over the 400-foot sign. In fact, they've got an additional 20 feet above that. Call it the green monster here at Dish Falk Field. And he cleared it with room to spare. So Ballou stepping up with a chance to get Rockwell off to a good start here. 0-1 pitch. Inside, gets away from the catcher. Headed to second is Brad Barnett. It appeared that Alex Dunlop 
Kind of got his glove crossed there. I think that pitch was down there. They probably would score that a wild pitch against Carter Hope, not on the catcher, Alex Dunlap. But Carter Hope struggling here a little bit early. He's missed with now three of his six pitches. And that one, a wild pitch. And the 1-1 pitch inside, but it is swung at for strike two. Ballou doing him a favor right there. Yeah, he got handcuffed in there. That pitch was in under his thumbs. If he'd have made contact, all he would have done was a little dribbler out to second base. Yeah, if you can't get a good swing at it, you probably shouldn't swing. <laughs> all right, one ball, two strikes. Barnett at second. Low for ball, ball two. Two balls, two strikes now to Cole Ballou. This would be big for Rockwall if they could get out in front here. They, Like you said, they had that three-run bottom of the fifth last night to take a short-lived lead, but they hadn't even gotten a base runner for the first four and two-thirds innings there. If they could get a lead and at least hold it for an inning, that would help their confidence. Ballou really crowding the plate on this 2-2 count. There's the pitch inside. You can see Carter Hope wants to move him off that dish a little. Well, Carter Hopes continues to pound him inside there. He got that one awkward swing to go ahead and the count one and two, but the wild pitch was low and in. The last two pitches have both missed too far inside. 3-2 pitch to Ballou. Swung on, hit into right field. That's a single, but they're going to hold the runner, Brad Barnett, at third. Jeff Payne saying, okay, we don't have anybody out. Let's not rush to try to score here on this play. You never want to run out of an inning there. First and third, nobody out. You're getting to the heart of your order here. Your best stick, Kendall Coleman, coming to the plate here. We saw it last night, the top three in the Rockwall order, all left-handed batters, and they struggled last night against the left-handed starter, Ryan Burnett, today getting the righty, Carter Hope. Maybe they're seeing that ball a little bit better. So Kendall Coleman steps up to the plate. Had some big plays out in center field last night. Dunlap, batting 413. Sorry, Dunlap giving out signs to his infield, seeing about how they want to play this. Their double play depth in the middle of the field. They would gladly take two outs to allow a run to score, but Coleman runs very well. He'd be a tough guy to double off. So Coleman at the plate, runners on the corners, just underway here, top of the first inning. Rockwall in the Woodlands. There's a strike. Class 5A Region 2 final. Of course, the winner will hang around and play in Austin next week for the state championship. That'll be over at the Dell Diamond. School wrapping up for all these kids across the state of Texas. It's kind of a fun week when, when school's out, you get a chance to come down to Austin, play a little baseball, why not? 0-1 pitch inside. Looked like the, uh, I, I the umpire there maybe called timeout. I'm not sure if that was the umpire or the batter who had called time there because Coleman stayed in the box, but it looked like the umpire was backing out. So no pitch there. Yeah, it's Rodney Langford behind the plate. Mark, or excuse me, Rick Miller behind the home plate. Rodney Langford at third. Mark Baletka at second. Jerry Johnson at first. And there is a strike. Good off speed pitch right there. Coleman sitting on that fastball, and Carter Hope didn't give it to him. So 0-2 count now to Coleman. And this would be a big strikeout for Carter Hope if he could somehow get Coleman out. It's the idea for the pitcher. When you've got a man sitting on third base early on in the game, you need a strikeout, especially with nobody out. It's the pitch fouled off to the Woodlands. Well, strikeout also doesn't give those runners a chance to advance. Even if Coleman hits a ground ball, the runners can move. Maybe your defense doesn't make the play right there. As a pitcher, if you get that strikeout, there's nothing else they can do. Yeah, Carter Hope with that 1.34 ERA. All these pitchers that have pitched in this series so far, real low ERAs, all under two. And here is the 0-2 pitch to Coleman. Looks like a little bit low. One ball, two strikes. He's missing down in the zone so far is Hope, and that's probably preferable to missing up because you miss up in the zone, it's a lot easier to hit the ball. But he's got to get those pitches in the zone and be able to throw all three for strikes. Coleman with that wide stance, looks at ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Rock, Rockwell likes to run. They just didn't get many base runners in situations last night where they could run. Their coach saying he likes to get the guys in motion out there. And if you think about it, you take away that one inning from the Woodlands where they had 17 batters come to the plate and they scored 12 runs. They were pretty much shut down every other inning. <laughs> they were. All right, the 2-2 pitch to Coleman. There's a strike looking on the outside corner. Big strikeout right there for Carter Hope. And Coleman 
Coleman having some words for the umpires. He's walking over there. That pitch looked pretty good from where we were sitting. Definitely too close a pitch to take with two strikes. Yeah, got to put that ball in play right there. I mean, even a ground ball, even if you are in a double play, you still bring in a run. Exactly. And last night, as we found, we went to the fifth inning before anyone scored. So early runs could be really big. Carson Childers steps up to the plate. 388 batting average, plays over at first. He is the cleanup batter. Got that big aluminum stick in his hand. Inside, ball one. Again, Hope is missing down with that fastball of his. So he's probably not going to give up too many really hard hits if he's going to miss low. But walks will end up hurting you just as bad as hits if you let him. Runners on the corners, one out. The pitch to Childers, low. And sprinting down to second is Cole Ballou. No throw even from the catcher right there. Ball short hopped in there. Would have, I don't think he would have had a play at all, but a great jump by Ballou. He timed it perfectly. And that's big. Takes the double play out of the equation here with just one out. Well, on a base knock now, maybe scores two. So here is the pitch from Carter Hope. And Childers fouls this one over towards the rock wall dugout. Big cut there on a 2-0 pitch. He was looking to drive one out there into the outfield. Just came up a little over the top of it. I'm a big fan of uniforms. The Woodlands with that kind of traditional style, sort of old school looking W there with the uh, almost the 1920s style White Sox look. Philadelphia <laughs> Athletics is what I was <laughs> thinking back in the days of Connie Mack. And, of course, Rockwall here with the, the Baltimore Orioles look. Two balls, one strike, and the pitch. Strike two. Good off-speed pitch right there by Carter Hope. He's gotten a couple of good swings and misses with that changeup. You know, as a pitcher, sometimes your best stuff isn't working. You have trouble with your fastball there. Maybe you just got to work with one of your other pitches. He's also back in the windup. Yeah, when you hit that runner on third, and that one comes off the noggin of, Char of uh, Carson Childers. So the hit by pitch puts Childers on first. Cole Ballou is at second. Red, Brad Barnett is at third right now. He tried to throw his curveball right there. He just didn't get over the top of it. You could see he was staying up there, just kind of spinning. Childers didn't make a huge effort to get out of the way of it, just kind of grazed his helmet, but that's enough. Here we are, an error, a single, and a hit batter, and Rockwall has the bases juiced. So Garrett Moon steps up to the plate. He is the catcher. First pitch to Moon. Ball one. Moon got the first hit last night off of Burnett, a double to deep left center field, part of that three-run rally by the Yellow Jackets in the fifth inning. That was a rope and that one. One ball, no strike. Here's the pitch. Swung on hit towards right. Is it going to drop? It does. That's going to bring in at least one run. So Moon with the moon shot to right. The bloop drops in. An old Texas leaguer right there. And scoring on the play is Brad Barnett for the first run of the game. And I really think that's what Rockwell's looking for today is to jump on the Woodlands early. When you're down one game nothing, it's important to get out early, kind of give your pitching staff a break. Well, and just to get out ahead, too, they, like I said, we had that three-run fifth inning last night. They had the lead, but it was gone in a hurry almost before you could take a breath right there, and the Woodlands just put it to bed in that big top of the sixth inning. So if they can get this lead, and we, we talked to Coach Payne before the ball game. He was talking off camera about they got to get the inning, and then they need that shutdown inning that next time to get themselves back up to bat right there, but to kind of maintain that lead. It doesn't do you any good if you score and then you let the other team go right back and score. You know, before the game, talking with Jeff Payne, the Rockwall head coach, and he was he really liked the dimensions of the field. He, think, he thinks it plays well for his team. They, they do have a lot of seniors. You know, you look around, the only dirt on the entire field is on the pitching mound. This one gets away from the catcher, but he does a nice job of keeping it at least in front of him there. And that's Alex Dunlop behind the plate. But if you look around, whether it's home plate, first, second, or third, that is an artificial surface just painted that orange color. The only dirt is the mound, and both coaches were saying how much they really like that mound. The pitchers, no complaints about the mound whatsoever. Ground ball to third, it is foul. Mm -hmm. It immediately bounced foul right off the top and tried yeah. to work its way back in. <laughs> 
This is Chris Glover, the DH today for Rockwall. He didn't appear in the ball game yesterday. Carson Childers was the DH, and Kaysen Adams, who's starting on the mound today for Rockwall, were in it. So this is his first experience here at this ballpark in this game. 260 average on the year. The 1-1 pitch here to Chris Glover. Ron Eastman wants a strike out here for the Woodlands. There's a strike, so one ball, two strikes, still only one out, bases loaded. Rockwall with a pair of hits already, and a run on the board, one nothing. When you get the bases loaded, you really want to put up a crooked number if you can. Rockwall trying to jump on the Woodlands early, down one game to none in this best of three game series. Fouled off. Just got a piece. So the count remains, one ball, two strikes, one out. Little or no wind today, nice, pleasant day. It's breezier early, but it's kind of gone out, partly clad out there, muggy day down on the field. And the pitch to Glover fouled off to the left side. Just got a piece of that one as well. A couple times there he spoiled those pitches and just stayed alive. And as a hitter, when you've got two strikes, I mean, if it's close, it might not be a strike that you can handle all that well, but you've got to do something with it. You can't just strike out. So you just kind of foul it off, stay alive, and hope that pitcher makes a mistake and gives you something that you can drive. Chris Glover is the DH for a reason. The one-two pitch, grounder towards third, touches the bag there for one out, fires to first, double play. Nicely done by the third baseman, Josh Pruitt of the Woodlands. That's how you get it done. So Rockwall will have to settle for just one run. The Woodlands coming to bat here in the bottom of the first from FoxSportsSouthwest.com, powered by the Legacy Sports Network. We'll be right back. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Hello, I'm Gerald Burke. And I'm Morgan Burke. I graduated from the Woodlands High School in 1998. I played football and I ran track there. Morgan and I are lawyers. We office at 24 Waterway Suite, number 660 in the Woodlands. I was a former prosecutor here in Montgomery County. Now I handle the criminal work at our office. I've been practicing for more than 30 years. If you have a legal concern, Contact us at 713-862-7766 or check us out at thehometownlawyer.com. And as always, go Highlanders! Yes, sir. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. Jeff Power and Cameron Kushwara with you here. Rockwall leading at 1-0 as we move into the bottom of the first. The Woodlands coming up to bat. Leadoff batter Hillen Warren. He is the shortstop wearing number five. Batting second will be number four, Charlie Warren, who plays center field. Alex Dunlop, the catcher, wears number 15, batting third. Chris Andritzos is your cleanup batter at first base. Blaine Gillespie is in right field, followed by Josh Shaw, Josh Pruitt, Colby Brown, and Luke Shirley. Leadoff batter Hillen Warren steps up to the plate. And they'll go up against Kaysan Adams. Kaysan Adams was a junior varsity player last year. First pitch fouled back. He does have an 8-2 and two record with one save, 1.70 earned run average with a 1.18 whip. Hill and Warren here batting 325. Impressive numbers, 393 on base percentage. Good to see for a leadoff batter. Warren had a good ball game last night. He was on base four times. Only had one hit, though, twice. Was walked, reached on an air. He scored a couple of runs, stole a base. Exactly one at you want out of your leadoff. Ball high there, two balls and one strike. Notice all the stickers there on the back of Hill and Warren's helmet. Of course, the red trim for the Woodlands. Line drive hit out towards right, and it's going to be foul. 
A little bit late on that one. Rockwall defense almost the same as we saw last night. Left to right around the outfield. Cole Ballou, Kendall Coleman, Nick Lutzel. Left side of the infield stayed the same. Brad Barnett, Dustin Angel at shortstop. Skyler Bean at second. And the new third ba first baseman right there, Carson Childers. And here is the ground ball to short. Dustin Angel with the throw to first. And Hill and Warren is retired to lead things off here in the bottom of the first. Case and Adams with a delivery. I think the best way you could describe that is herky-jerky. He has a big high leg kick. He really hides his arm and turns his upper body away from the pitcher and then really slings that upper body and arm through the zone when he delivers that pitch. But he's getting a lot of movement. It's going to go up and away from the lefties, up and in on righties. Charlie Warren steps up, ball laced into center, but right at the center fielder, Kendall Coleman, who hauls it in for the second out of the inning. Coleman covers a lot of ground out there, although we did see him commit an error last night. He just dropped the ball that he had tracked down. That time, no problem. That hard hit ball right at you is a tough play to make for an outfielder. So Alex Dunlop steps up now, and he is the catcher for the Woodlands. Two outs, pitch on the outside corner, strike one. Dunlap struggled last night. He reached on a fielder's choice in that sixth inning, scored a run, but was officially 0 for 5. And there is ball fouled off for an 0-2 count now. Lost amongst Ryan Burnett, Chris Andritzos, and Carter Hope. Alex Dunlap, oh, by the way, he'll be at Stanford next fall playing some baseball. This one high, one ball, two strikes, two outs. No question, Case and Adams works fast. Coach said he grew about three inches over the summer last year and Picked up a little velocity and better movement on his pitches. They pulled him off the JV and put him into the starting rotation. And look at him. Now he's pitching in a situation here where his team is, needs him to get a victory today. Well, it obviously worked. Eight W's on the year is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, eight and two. Ball swung on, hit towards left. But again, played perfectly in the outfield. That's Cole Ballou for the final out of the inning. So three up, three down. And the Yellow Jackets of Rockwall will come to bat at the top of the second, leading one to nothing. The time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. News sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left, it's up, it's deep, and it's going to be gone! Legacy Sports Network brings you high quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff, Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone, touchdown! This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. I appreciate it, Gerald. You guys at Legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay-per-view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field in beautiful Austin, Texas. 91 degrees, little or no breeze, but it is blowing out, so we'll say about five miles per hour. On the hill, Carter Hope for the Woodlands Highlanders who trail Rockwall 1-0. This is game two, a best of three game series. Cameron Kushwar and Jeff Power are joining you here. Bringing you the action here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com powered by the Legacy Sports Network. And getting it started here for Rockwall will be Nick Lutzel in the second inning. And Carter Hope with the pitch. Strike one, good breaking ball right there. Good hard pitch right there. Lutzel, one of the few ball players who stands far up in the batter's box and does not crowd the plate. His front foot is almost outside of the batter's box. Hey, with a 330 average, it works. Swings it, what looked like a ball there for strike two. Ball was definitely on the outside portion of the plate. Well, he definitely wants the ball in that, so he can turn on it there. I would just stay away from him like Carter Hope is doing. Good breaking pitch. A little bit low, though. One ball, two strikes. Both these pitchers have really tried to work the lower part of the plate so far, and that usually works at the high school level, trying to keep the batter's uh, 
beating the ball into the ground. Well, you can't hit a ball over the fence if it's on the ground. That's a pretty pretty <laughs> obvious thing right there. Ground balls will Golf not be Golf swings in baseball usually don't work. No. And this one just outside. He's trying to stretch that outside corner because he knows Lutzel is going to struggle getting all the way out there. All four of those pitches have been on the outer half of the plate or near it. Alex Dunlop trying to paint that plate there. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. And this time, strike three. It bounced in, but nonetheless, unable to hold the bat back was Nick Lutzel. He goes down swinging. Dustin Angel will now step up. Angel hit the ball hard a couple of times last night. He had the big hit in that fifth inning, a two-run double to get the scoring started. Angel calls timeout. And he hit one hard, his first at bat, that just didn't land for him. One thing we noticed last night, once we got past about the fourth inning, when the shadow effect went away here at Dish Falk Field, both teams started hitting the ball much better. We talked with the coaches about that before the game. They both admitted they thought that could have been a difference. You hear the, the Longhorn players and some of the opposing teams that come here to Dishbuck Field talk about that, that how the pitcher might be in the sunlight, but the batter's in that shade. And then the next thing you know, when that ball's coming close to home plate, it's hard to pick up. This ball fouled off. No balls, two strikes now to Dustin Angel. He's the shortstop wearing number eight for Rockwall, located just east of Dallas. If you're familiar with the Mesquite area, just north of there, once was the Fastest growing county in the state of Texas for quite a while, I might add. I was playing golf yesterday with a rock wall resident. Neil Beasley over at Fox Sports Southwest. And swinging strike here, the throw out to first. And a nice throw right there by Alex Dunlop for the second out of the inning. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Three pitches and Angels down on strikes. Hope is coming out this inning and he's being a lot more, I don't know if he's necessarily being more aggressive, but he's throwing strikes early in the count getting ahead of these hitters, and he's able to get him into a count where they have to protect the plate and expand their strike zone, and he can throw him his off-speed stuff. That's a good recipe. Skyler Bean now takes a, a moment, steps out. You know, one of the things Neil told me about Rockwall, it's also the smallest county in the state of Texas, so. This one just on the outside. Not the uncommon to see Houston area baseball teams and Dallas-Fort Worth area baseball team squaring off in the Region 2 final. It seems like it's happened a lot over the years, especially the last 20 years or so. Well, there is a lot of talent in those two areas and just a lot of schools, a lot of kids like to grow up play baseball. It's predominantly a Dallas-Fort Worth area region, but I tell you, that Northwest Houston area, they've got a lot of good baseball there. This ball hit up the middle on a beat. And over to first, nice play by the second baseman. That's Luke Shirley for the final out of the inning here in the second. So Rockwall goes down one, two, three. The Woodlands coming to bat here in the bottom of the frame, trailing one nothing. Game two of this best of three game series. We'll be right back. Tremendous. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. Say hello to McDonald's new Tremendous. CBO. Smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO. The simple joy of Tremendous. Yeah. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. Rockwall leading the Woodlands 1-0 game two of this best of three game series. We're here in Austin, Texas. And Rockwall's pitcher, Kaysen Adams, on the mound. Picks up strike one against Chris Andritzos. 
First pitch changeup right there. Did not want to throw a fastball. A couple of hard hit balls last inning by the Woodlands Highlanders. Just happened to find gloves. This one perhaps a bit high. One ball, one strike to Andritzos, who was three for four yesterday. Two doubles, a single. He drove in three, scored two. He had quite a ball game. Plays first, headed to Oklahoma. Well, he's verbally committed to Oklahoma, but just a sophomore, so he's got two more years to refine his craft, and you might hear his name called in the June Amateur Draft in 2015. Ball laced into right center. And making a play in right field. Nice job running that one down was the right fielder. It held Nick up Lutzer. held up just a little bit out there. And Coach Eastman was talking in the pregame that for the first two times through the order, his team got a little pull happy out there. They were trying to yank everything. But as the game got along, they started getting a little more comfortable and went the opposite way. That was a good hard hit ball to right. Just hung up. Blaine Gillespie at the plate now. Strike one. Gillespie back into that batter's box. Batting 357. 24 ribbies this year. Outside and low. One ball, one strike. All four of the outs that have been recorded by the Rockwall defense, they've been hit pretty hard, just their defense has been positioned just right. Yeah, there's a reason why the position players play where they do. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> usually where the ball is hit. <laughs> and here at Dishfalk Field, both coaches talked about it with us before the game, how spacious it is out here at Dishfalk Field. You really have to – you need some speed out there in the outfield to track those balls down. All right, the pitch from Adams. Ground ball over to short. Nice play by Dustin Angel, and he's out. Pretty good speed right there by Blaine Gillespie. Almost beat it out. Angel probably could have charged in and taken that one on an earlier hop right there, but opting to stay back, set his feet, just make a really strong throw. Got him by half a step. Not uncommon on an artificial surface for the shortstop to play a little further back. The ball gets to you quicker out here on the turf. Josh Shaw wearing number 99 steps up to the plate. Just don't see number 99 very often in baseball, do you? <laughs> Mitch Williams is the only one I can think of. There you of. go. <laughs> Good call. Maybe he's a Mitch Williams fan. The 0-1 pitch. Ground ball hit towards third, but foul. 0-2 now to Josh Shaw, the designated hitter. I, I tell you what, though, if anyone's going to wear it, it's going to be a DH. <laughs> Adam's getting good movement on his pitches in the ball game. He's really able to get it in on these right-handed hitters. That, that one got the umpire. In. Just kind of noticing here, Adams – he tends to look away from the plate while he's coming into home, almost like Fernando Valenzuela yeah, used he, to look up towards the sky. He turns that whole upper body of his away. He's, he's really kind of showing the hitter his back, and that might be a result of, like, like we were talking about, the growth spurt. You know, maybe his mechanics changed a little bit. Maybe it's a conscious effort on his part to just shield the ball to the last possible moment. A little more deceptive. Ball fouled off here to the right. I always found it hard as a pitcher to, if you take your eye off the, the target, it's harder to hit that target. That's how I looked at it. But some pitchers are, they get into a point, into a groove where they feel like, hey, I can, I know where I'm throwing it. You know, a lot of it is foot placement, too, where you place your foot. When you're coming down from the windup, you get used to putting it in the same area. Some pitchers will move that foot around if they want to work it to the left or right part of the plate. They'll position their foot differently and always just throw over the top of your head there, and really doing a nice job of throwing over his head here, is Adams. Ground ball to second, over to first. Nicely done. Good job by the second baseman. That's Skyler Bean with the final put out here of Josh Shaw. So three up, three down. Six retired by the Woodlands. We move now to the top of the third inning. Rockwall leading it 1-0 over the Highlanders. VIP treatment care. Thanks for saving me all that money on my car insurance, Robert. That's State Farm's discount double check. We dig through your policy, find any hidden savings. That's funny. Before every home game, I used to do an Ivy double check. Really? Yeah, people drop all kinds of stuff in here. Old cell phone, French horn. Andre Dawson? What year is it? Let State Farm find your hidden savings with a discount double check. Caught it! Woo! Get to a better state. State Farm.
And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. one nothing. Rockwall leading the Woodlands right now as we move into the top of the third inning. First Victoria, the oldest independent bank in Texas. One of our sponsors here on the Legacy Sports Network. Good to have you along here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com. State tournament next week here in Austin. The Dell Diamond will host four of the five championship classifications. Class 3A will be here at Dish Falk Field. In fact, we'll be bringing you that one here from the Legacy Sports Network crew, the semifinals and the championship. All right, leading it off here for Rockwall and looking at strike one is the leadoff batter, Brad Barnett, batting 336 with a 472 on base percentage. And that's pretty high for a leadoff batter. Good to see. That's going to hit him right yeah. there, so he's off the first. Second time he has been on base, once by an error, once hit by a pitch. Came around to score in that first inning. Rockwall just kind of doing whatever it takes here. And something I noticed in between innings there, Carter Hope threw all of his warm-up pitches exclusively out of the stretch. He struggled in the stretch in that first inning, so maybe he's just taking an extra precaution there, wanting to get a little more reps and get a little more comfortable. So Cole Blue steps up. Swung on, runner going, high throw into center field. But Brad Barnett will stay there. And it's a good thing that throw was high there. Barnett took an awkward looking slide. It looked like the shortstop, Warren, was kind of blocking the bag partially. Barnett slid out to the second base side and he went a good distance past that bag. Second stolen base for Rockwall. They are liking their chances of running on Carter Hope. So Barnett at second, inside. One ball, one strike. Ballou yanked a single out into right field his last time up. A little hard ground ball between the first and second baseman. If he does that again, Rockwall might get themselves another tally. 365 coming into this weekend series as the pitch. Ground ball to second. Looks the runner. Couldn't make a play to third, so had to go to first as Brad Barnett moves over to third base on the play. Good situational hitting there by Ballou. If nothing else, you got to get the ball to the right side of the field and let your runner advance over there to third. So now a hit batter, a stolen base, and a good ground ball out. They've got a runner 90 feet away with just one out. And here comes your biggest batter, Kendall Coleman. Now, Kendall Coleman, last time he was up, he struck out looking. They had runners on first and third in that first inning. But they would later get a run off a single from Garrett Moon later in that first inning for the one nothing lead. So Coleman back into the batter's box, headed to Iowa. Had a chance to watch them the other day in baseball. The Big Ten Network. <laughs> Woodlands fans thinking the Empire's squeezing them there. Hope, regardless of if he's pitching to righties or lefties, he is really trying to stretch that outside corner. Look at that on base percentage, 542. Ball grounded up the middle. That's going to bring in a run. Coleman almost beats it out at first. Sort of an errant throw there by Hill and Warren, but ball scooped out nicely. Good, yeah, I was going to say, good scoop by Andrizzo. Stretched out there, played the short hop. Only play was to first base, and Coleman flying down the line there made him work for it. But Rockwell scratching out another run here without the benefit of a hit, and they now lead it 2-0. So Coleman will get the RBI there, 2-0. Carson Childers steps up into the batter's box. Low crouch, ball one. You know, it's like, it's, baseball's like golf in a sense that you've got all different types of, uh, you know, batting styles. You know, players come up to the play just like in golf. Everyone hits the ball differently. It's sort of similar in, in baseball. You've got to go with what's comfortable for you. Ground ball over to Hillen Warren, and he scoops it up, fires the first for the out. But not before Rockwall picks up a run here in the top of the third inning, and they now lead it 2 0 as we head into the bottom of the third here at Dishfalk Field. We'll be right back with much more. You're watching Legacy Sports Network's championship series play between Rockwall and the Woodlands, the Class 5A Region 2 Championship Series. We'll be right back. Lucy. Lucy loves to shop, Lucy also loves to save. 
Luckily, Lucy can do both with her new First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card. Not only can Lucy save on that new dress, she can also get those new shoes, too. Apply today and take advantage of everything a First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card has to offer, including a 12-month 2.99% APR introductory rate. You really can shop and save. First Community Credit Union, official credit union of the Houston Texans. Up next for career day, quarterback Aaron Rodgers. That State Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well. Did you save my dad hundreds with a discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self-esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! This got double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. Oh, 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 oh. That was quick. This was you. Hmm? You've been trying to get me to eat egg whites for years. You went and talked to McDonald's. <gasps> oh, and egg white delight McMuffin. <laughs> oh, I knew it. The new egg white delight McMuffin. Freshly grilled egg whites and... All right, we move now to the bottom of the third inning. Rockwall leads the Woodlands 2-0. And up first here in the bottom of the third inning for the Woodlands is number eight, Josh Pruitt, the third baseman. So far, the Woodlands have gone three up, three down in their first two at-bats here. See if things change in the third inning. Pruitt getting his first action of the weekend as he's taken over at the hot corner today. Carter Hope moving over to pitch. And the 1-1 pitch, swung on, fouled off towards Look the out. Woodlands bench. <laughs> Going after his own dugout say, right you don't, there. You don't do that. Don't, don't hit it towards your own dugout. There, there are some <laughs> more hard-hit balls by the Highlanders batters. They're just hitting them late. right at some. Yeah, the last two batters were slower ground balls. Oh, inside-out swing right there. He's really doing a good job keeping his weight back and just firing those wrists through the strike zone. So fouled back, one ball, two strikes. Almost took out our photographer over there. There's strike three swinging. So Josh Pruitt fishing on that outside portion of the plate comes up empty. First strike out there for Adams in the ball game and Rockwall catcher stepping out of the circle there for a moment. He might need a little help right there. He's throwing the ball around after the strike out there going around the horn and his coaching staff's going to come out for a second, but now he waves him off. Kind of kind of shaking his hand there. I don't know if maybe a piece of the bat got it. Right. It happens. I would hope he wouldn't put his bare hand up there by the bat. <laughs> That's not wise. Get that spray out. That numbing spray. You ever seen that stuff? Mm -hmm. That stuff's amazing. You Good spray stuff. it on, it just freezes your, <laughs> your hand. Yeah, they have that at the, uh, the hospital and on baseball fields. <laughs> So one ball, no strikes. Colby Brown at the plate. He's your left fielder for the Woodlands. Where's number 11? Brown hit the little chopper when the bases were loaded. And it was still a three to two ball game last night that the third baseman, Barnett, trying to come home and make a play with it. He bobbled the ball, tied the ball game up. Brown later single, drove in around that inning. Here's a strike, two balls, one strike. You know, in the early part of the game, usually the first three innings, both the pitcher and the catcher are trying to figure out where exactly the strike zone is for the umpire, Rick Miller. And there's a strike. You know, you feel it out. He's going to give you the outside corner. He's going to give you the lower part of the plate. You never really want to go to the high part of the plate, but some umpires will give you that strike if you hit it. Well, regardless of the, if a batter's right or lefty, Rick Miller set up on the inside. There's a strikeout. Jumping over the bat and firing to first is the catcher for Rockwall. Nicely done, Garrett Moon. So as the umpire sets up on that inside corner, it's tough for him to see the outside corner, obviously. Both pitchers are trying to stretch it and see if they can get just a little bit more on the outside there. Adams punching out the last two hitters that he's faced here. He has really settled down after a couple of hard hit balls in those first two innings. That'll bring up Luke Shirley, the second baseman. Batting ninth, ball grounded up the middle. That could get through. And his speed definitely kills. I tell you, Luke Shirley got down that line nicely, and he's on base. I think that ball hit Adam's glove and slowed it down just enough for Bean to pick it up there. But I don't think Skyler Bean had a clean handle on that ball. Looked like he could have made the play right there, but you could see him decide not to throw. 
Might be an error there. No, that that would be the first hit there. They already scored it and would have been a tough play regardless because, again, the pitcher's glove slowed it down. So the Woodlands trailing 2-0 here. 1-0 count to the leadoff batter, Hill and Warren. And there's strike one, one ball, one strike. Second time through the order here, so we'll see what adjustments the Woodlands hitters have made to Case and Adams' pitches right there. Warren way out in front of the changeup. First time that Adams has been in the stretch all day. Here's the pitch, and that's going to squeeze through right between the 5-6 hole into the left field for a base hit. So Hill and Warren with a nice piece of hitting, and that will bring up Charlie Warren. Adams with a very quick delivery out of the stretch right there. And it's in very stark contrast to his windup where he has all the motion. He takes a very exaggerated stance when he's there in the stretch, but he just pumps and goes. So two outs here. Case and Adams now will have to face Charlie Warren. Warren hit that ball very hard, but it was just on a line right out to the center fielder, Coleman, his first at bat. And Warren is a center fielder himself, batting 323. Runner in scoring position. And the pitch, swung on, hit towards center, but right at Kendall Coleman. That's about four hard hit balls right at a rock wall outfielder. And that is the third and final out of the inning, but not for a pair of hits. However, the Woodlands fail to score. 2 0. Rockwall leads. We'll be right back with the top of the fourth in just a moment. Hello, I'm Gerald Burke. And I'm Morgan Burke. I graduated from the Woodlands High School in 1998. I played football and I ran track there. Morgan and I are lawyers. We office at 24 Waterway, suite number 660 in the Woodlands. I was a former prosecutor here in Montgomery County. Now I handle the criminal work at our office. I've been practicing for more than 30 years. If you have a legal concern, contact us at 713-862-7766 or check us out at thehometownlawyer.com. And as always, go Highlanders. Yes, sir. McDonald's dollar menu just keeps getting better. Introducing the all-new mouth-watering grilled onion cheddar burger topped with melty white cheddar and caramelized onions. Plus all your tasty favorites for just a dollar each. Every day, as always, there's a lot to love for a little on McDonald's Dollar Menu. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. We're here in Austin, Texas. 91 degrees, beautiful afternoon for baseball. We're in the month of June already, can you believe it? <laughs> Cameron Kouchoir and Jeff Power joining you here. Class 5A Region 2 Championship Series. Rockwall leading it 2 0. And stepping up to the plate is number 25, Garrett Moon. Moon knocked in the first run of the ball game. That little bloop single out to right field with the bases loaded. And there's a strike on the outer part of the plate. One ball, one strike to Garrett Moon. Had that RBI single in the first. With well hit ball, wasn't it? One ball, one strike. The pitch to Moon. Swung on, hit towards right. This looks like it could drop. And oh, nice job by the Woodlands second baseman there, Luke Shirley, hunting that one down. I thought that ball was hit a little harder, but uh, it sort of died out there. Well, if that one had landed, too, there's all that foul territory there. Would have skipped off there. Moon might have had himself a little bloop double if he just put a little more oomph on that ball. So that'll bring up Chris Glover. Hit into that inning ending 5-3 double play with the bases juiced and one out in the first inning. Yeah, hit it right to the third baseman who just simply stepped on the bag and fired it over to first. You know, if you're Rockwall, you're winning this game two to nothing. Your pitcher's really cruising along, but in the back of your mind, you got to know that that Woodlands offense, how they erupted for 12 runs last night, they need to get some more on the board here, do Rockwall. No question about it, that first time through the lineup for the Woodlands, they were hitting the ball hard. They don't have any runs to show for it, but. I think before it's all said and done, they're going to put some runs on the board. So no question about it, Rockwell would like to pad that lead. And here is the 2-0 pitch. 
ball three. Three that, balls, no strikes. That and although the Woodlands batters have you know, made nine outs, only have the couple of singles for it, they've hit some balls very, very hard out there. You can't feel too comfortable. There's a strike, three balls, one strike. Yeah, I mean, just an amazing inning yesterday, the sixth inning for the Woodlands where they brought 17 batters to the plate, scored 12 runs. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> they won it 12 to five. And here is the 3-1 pitch, ball four. So Chris Glover headed to first base via the walk with one out in the inning. That brings up Nick Lutzel, who struck out in the second inning. First walk issued by Carter Hope. He's hit a batter. They've allowed a runner to reach on an air. We're getting a courtesy runner here for the DH Glover. Yeah, Tyler Ballinger comes in. But the Woodlands defense has not really helped the cause here so far. We said the air that led to the first run, a couple stolen bases. There's a wild pitch in there. And Hope has hit a pair of batters. You like the courtesy runner idea? Well, it gives a it, it gives more playing time to some of the ball players. Good and as call, a coach, yeah. you can take a guy who maybe doesn't have the best glove or the best bat, but maybe he's really quick, and you can get him some playing time, and it gives you another weapon there. It's like a free runner, and later on you can insert your good hitter back in there right after him, so why not? And, and not uncommon to see coaches maybe look out at their own track and see who's really fast yeah. and see if they can talk them into coming out playing some ball just to let them know, hey, you're not going to have to bat. I, just go them run on the bases. <laughs> see it a lot in softball there. You'll see some really quick runners who have two hits on the year, but they scored 15 runs. Oh, inside. Thought Nick Lutzel might take one for the team right yeah. there, but no. Well, it's real easy to say, oh, you should have leaned in and <laughs> caught that one there. But we're up here in the box. Hey, everybody else worried. has been doing it for rock ball. Yeah, we're not worried about getting plunked. <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, it looked like he was – he didn't move w too far out of the way, so maybe he was trying to get hit, just didn't uh, – couldn't do it. Anyway, ball thrown in a little bit high. We'll see. And out of there at second. And looks like the shortstop for the Woodlands. That was that's the second down. baseman there, Shirley, who came over to catch that one there. That was a great job getting that tag down. The throw was high. He was able to slap it down on the back of the pinch runner before he could get into the bag. But it looked like he took he took the brunt of that base runner and just barreled him over. Yeah, that is Luke Shirley. You know, sometimes you hear about players getting spiked when they're over at second when the runner comes in high, but I don't think this is a spike situation. He might have got hit in that shoulder area. Let's he, see. He might have got well, his he might have got his bell rung right there, but kind of looking at his eye. Guess he's gonna be okay. Might have taken a shoulder right there well, to I, the eye socket well, area. I, I think I think he just got knocked back and hit himself or hit the ground or whatever because the contact appeared to be with the base runner down by his legs. Yeah. And then he just got spilled backwards. Well, maybe in the process of trying to make that tag so quickly, he somehow hurt himself. You know, you're taught whether you're the second baseman or the shortstop, when you go to cover that bag, you've got to the minute you catch that ball, the second you catch that ball. You've got to drop that glove down like a weight, like it is just like it weighs 100 pounds. Drop it on the runner's foot. And he could have hurt himself somehow in the process. Well, Rockwall already with a couple stolen bases before this inning there. They obviously have Carter Hope timed pretty well, and we're having success running on him there. And the pinch runner for the designated hitter. But Hope, a good job, threw over there several times before he threw a pitch. And... It was a very short lead. It was a good jump by the runner, but he only had a couple of step lead and just too far to go. And a good strong throw down by the catcher Dunlap. So interesting play right there. And you, you might have seen there uh, on the side. Players continue to try to stay loose and warmed up. And you never know when it's your time to come into the game. The, the catcher warming up over there on the side. Well, Alex they're warming Dunlap. up. He's warming up another infielder. And we've got medical t medical personnel on site here at UFCU Dishfog Field. They're down at field level, but they haven't come out yet. I think they're they're probably just checking to make sure we got the rock wall 
athletic training staff out there as well. I mean, if he hit his head, you want to make sure he's okay with concussion awareness right now. I mean, you, you can't be too careful. Yeah, that's uh, getting some blood off the uniform there as well. Some sportsmanship right there. The the rock wall trainers working on the Woodlands players. <laughs> and that's because the Woodlands trainers working on the eye area. <laughs> so some good team efforts right there on both sides by the trainers. It is about sportsmanship. You know, that's the most important thing. So taking a little break right here, we're almost halfway through this ball game, Jeff. Each team with a couple of hits, but Rockwall has scratched out some runs. They got an unearned run in that first with a leadoff error, a wild pitch, a stolen base, and a little bloop single. Last inning, a, a run scoring without even getting a hit. Hit by a pitch, a stolen base, and a couple of ground balls to get the run home right there. So, you know, they're, they're not exactly dominating this ball game here, but they're doing enough. They're making the little plays right here. The Woodlands batters, you could probably argue, have swung the bat better. They've hit the ball very hard just out a few times. And, you know, it only took the Woodlands one inning yesterday when they only had six outs to go. But the longer this ball game goes and Rockwall just keeps kind of grinding and scraping out runs and getting outs when they're out on defense there, you know, that's going to boost their confidence. And when you talk about a best two out of three and when we would – a third game would be right after this one there. You got to figure Rockwall would be possibly the favorite there because if we force that third game, that means they're going to win this game and they'll have just turned around. They'll have their tails up going into that final ball game. He's going to get a new jersey, it looks like. Yeah, once they get that blood on the jersey, you have to get it off. And if you can't, time to go grab another jersey. So we'll see. There might be a number change, too. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. I would imagine every player's probably got two jerseys somewhere. Get this far along, especially when you're on the road. You never know what'll happen. But uh, nope, he's got a new number, number two. <laughs> so uh, perhaps, I was going to say, maybe someone on the bench grabbed the jersey for him, but there is no, uh, I don't see a number two uh, on the Woodlands roster. We'll double check that, though. So nonetheless, Let's reset the situation here for you. Runner on first base. No, he's out from the stolen base. You're right. So, okay. So two outs and nobody on base. And I'm not sure what the call on the pitch was there. I believe it was a ball. The scoreboard has not been updated to reflect the balls and the strikes, but there was a pitch dealt, so there's got to be something. And they patched him up. You could say that they told him to rub some dirt on it, but, oh, wait, there's no dirt here on the infield. And now the umpire there, Rick Miller, says one ball, one strike, and they put it up on the scoreboard. So one ball, one strike, two outs now. And up at the plate now is Nick Lutzel again. He had a nice little break there. Carter Hope was able to throw some balls and keep loose in the interim. Lutzel struck out in the second. 2-1 pitch to Lutzel. Laced foul. Almost took out his coach, Jeff Payne, over there. Gave it the old Ole stab. Well, he made an effort at it there, <laughs> but I think the ball was behind him. He didn't, uh, he didn't put his body in front of that. Jeff's been coaching up at Rockwall about five years now. Done a nice job. I don't think anybody saw this coming, Rockwall making it to the uh, – Right here in the regional finals, there's so much talent at Dallas-Fort Worth area. They beat each other up. It's so hard to get out of that area. Well, well, he talked to us, and he said there were a couple schools that they thought were just better than them, but they've played really well and just made the plays when it's mattered. Yeah, flower mound. There's a strike on that outside corner for strike three, and Lutzel goes down looking this time. That's two strikeouts for him as the Woodlands get that little damage right here. Carter Hope giving his team hope as they trail 2-0 to Rockwall, but they're coming to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Lucy. Lucy loves to shop. Lucy also loves to save. Luckily, Lucy can do both with her new First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card. Not only can Lucy save on that new dress, she can also get those new shoes, too. Apply today and take advantage of everything a First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card has to offer, including a 12-month 2.99% APR introductory rate. You really can shop and save. First Community Credit Union, official credit union of the Houston Texans. 
Up next for career day, quarterback Aaron Rodgers. That State Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well. Did you save my dad hundreds with a discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self-esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! This guy double checked! Get to a better state. State Farm. All righty, welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. Cameron Couchoir and Jeff Power joining you from here in the press box. Media. Woodland's down. 2 nothing, but the meat of their order coming up right now. The three, four, five spots. Alex Dunlap going to Stanford. Chris Andritzos committed to Oklahoma. Blaine Gillespie to follow there. And this is their second time seeing Case and Adams. And that one's high, ball one. They, they got through last inning, did the Woodlands. First eight batters were all retired. They got a couple hits last time. And Charlie Warren ending the inning with a hard hit line drive. And ball two. So a hitter's count here. Alex Dunlap. Flew out to left his first at bat in the first inning, but he hit that one hard. Yeah, he scorched it. And here is the 2-0 pitch to Alex Dunlop. Oh, catches that inside corner. But you will never see a catcher argue a borderline strike because they'll just turn around and expect to get that same call <laughs> for their pitcher. Two balls, one strike. Good point. The pitch to Dunlop. Good breaking ball. Lace to third and... Robbed again is Alex Dunlop, this time by the third baseman for Rockwall, Brad Barnett. Hello. <laughs> Look what I found. That's the fourth line drive out that I have in my scorebook right here. They're hitting the ball hard. They've had a couple of hard hit ground balls right to the shortstop. So they're getting good swings. They're not being fooled. They're just getting unlucky. This brings up Chris Andritzos. He laces this one up the middle for a single. And... And Dritzos, after going three for four last night with his first hit today after flying out to right in the second inning. He's having himself a good weekend. Four for six now. Three runs batted in, a couple runs scored, and that brings the tying run to the plate. Yeah, that's Blaine Gillespie. Grounded out to short in the second inning. Adams had to go into the stretch last inning for the first time and has a much – Shorter, more compact delivery when he's in the stretch than when he's in the windup there. Might lose a little bit of velocity there, too, when he can't build up as much momentum. Be interesting to keep an eye on that. Ball fouled back. No balls, one strike. To Blaine Gillespie, Josh Shaw on deck. And this is the heart of the Woodlands order, and all their players have been hitting the ball hard despite – only three hits in the game. We don't have stolen base numbers on either of these two teams. We got all their stats except for the stolen bases, so we don't really know who likes to run and how frequently they're. And Rizzo's not much of a lead. And the pitch, grounded foul. Talked about in Rizzo's earlier, going to, verbally committed to Oklahoma. And you see that more and more now. Players, they want to get that part of the, the recruiting process over. Maybe they don't get bothered as much. They kind of settle in on a team, kind of get a good feel for them. Kretzos wants to go to OU. He's over at first. This one low to Gillespie. Good eye right there. One ball, two strikes, one out. The Woodlands have out hit Rockwall 3-2, but trailed 2-0. Rockwall's done a nice job of manufacturing their two runs. One of those runs unearned. Popped out, this one foul, and looks like out of play, but giving chase nonetheless is the Rockwall catcher, Garrett Moon. Rockwall fans over on that side, they have made a lot of noise here in both of these ball games. The Woodland crowd, a little bit more sedate. Used to it. <laughs> That's exactly what they expect to win. So... Rockwell up 2-0, but the Woodlands threatening here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One ball, two strikes. This one popped up into short center. 
Kendall Coleman coming on, and he makes the grab. You can see that Sun was a little bit of a challenge right there as he hauled that one in right by the Longhorn logo in center field. It almost looked like that ball had a little bit of backspin on it there because it, it seemed like it was hit a little bit better than that, but Coleman had to keep coming on and keep coming on and keep coming on. Ended up being a pretty shallow fly ball. So two outs now. That brings up Josh Shaw. He grounded to second earlier. Inside strike. Tell you, a pitcher, if he can get that inside strike, man, that is such a blessing. It's hard to hit a pitch that's that close to you. Well, and the umpire's set up on that inside corner so he can see that one better. Adams has done a good job of mixing his pitches inside and out. There's a grounder foul. So quickly 0-2 now for Shaw. Carter Hope, for the most part, has really tried to stay away from the rock wall hitters and tried to expand that strike zone outside. But Adams has done a better job, I think, of coming inside, outside, mixing up his fastball with his off-speed pitches. Josh Shaw steps back into the batter's box. 0-2 pitch from Kaysen Adams. Down low, one ball, two strikes. Don't want to give him anything to hit on that 0-2 count. Yeah, that's, I was going to say that's a great pitch right there. It's nowhere near the strike zone there. If the guy swings at it, there's absolutely nothing he can do. Shaw with kind of an unusual bat there, all yellow. But he makes it work as he laces this one into center. So runners now on first and second. And Shaw takes a tumble rounding first. Another hard hit ball straight back up the middle there. Both the hits this inning have been hard singles right back through the box. Definitely getting some better looks here as the game has gone along. The Woodlands hitters, four of their last eight, have singled. But they haven't been able to string enough together. And, I mean, it takes at least three singles to get in a run. So Josh Pruitt steps up to the plate, the third baseman. Looks at ball one low, breaking ball. Bouncing in around the plate. Last night, the Highlanders using the extra base hits, pounding out three doubles, taking advantage of all those walks, the freebies that they got. And the 1-0 pitch from Adams. Lace towards right. It's going to be foul. Giving chase over there is the first baseman, Carson Childers. Can't quite come up with it. So one ball, one strike. You know, that artificial surface will get pretty hot, too. The sun has not been out the entire time, so it won't be a factor today. But we've seen games here where the temperatures are hovering around 100 degrees. That turf will get up to, like, 115, 120. You're just constantly moving your feet up and down. <laughs> a lot of these guys wearing black shoes. Those shoes will get hot quick. 1-1 one, one pitch foul back. Hello, microphone. One ball, two strikes. You can see the hitters are on it there. They're just a fraction of a second off with their timing or a little bit low on it there, but they're not being completely fooled. There's not a lot of swings and misses by the Woodlands batters. So the one-two pitch to Josh Pruitt. Swung on, strike three, drops it, tags him out. That is the third and final out of the inning. That'll show me. <laughs> so two hits, two runs. They're both left, though. We go now to the top of the fifth, Rockwall leading it 2-0. Time is now for live video highlights of your school's March to Excellence. New sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up, it's deep, and it's going to be gone! Legacy Sports Network brings you high-quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff, Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone, touchdown! This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. Legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay per view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home.
Glad to have along here at UFCU Dishfalk Field in Austin, Texas, where Rock Rawl is leading the Woodlands 2-0, despite being out hit 4-2. Rockwall has had the more timely hits today where the Woodlands have left some runners on like the last inning where they had two left on base. Well, Rockwall had two hits in the first inning. They have not gotten a hit since then, although they have added a run. They're just clawing and doing what they can in this ballgame. Carter Hope's first pitch is fouled off by Dustin Angel. Trying to drag bunt his way on there. Test Pruitt over at third base. So Dustin Angel. Stepping up the plate, he struck out in the second inning. Eight, nine, and one spots due up here for Rockwall. Ball grounded towards the third baseman. It somehow gets through right through the five, six hole, and that is a base hit. So a nice piece of hitting right there by Angel. That's going to bring up Skyler Bean. It's the first hit since Garrett Moon's RBI blue back in the first inning and just the second base runner that they have had since that first inning as well. Brad Barnett led off the third inning, getting hit by pitch, came around to score. Oh, excuse me, there was a walk last inning as well, so. But he was eliminated on the caught stealing. So runner on first, pitch out. Thought they might be going Ooh. on that pitch. The first and third basemen were just crashing in right there <laughs> on the bunt. Skyler Bean pulled the bunt back. He was going to try the butcher boy play. Boy, that's, that's very unnerving for those infielders, and they're charging in. Suddenly the guy's ready to swing, and you're 50 feet away. Yeah, I saw that in softball the other day. Someone was showing bunt, just turned around and slapped it right at an infielder. <laughs> All right, the 1-0 count. And that time not even showing bunt, and both of the infielders playing at regular depth. He just took it low and away. So now a uh, two balls and no strike count. To Skyler Bean. Hope really struggling to find the strike zone here, and he's in danger of putting two runners on base for the top of the order. Brad Barnett has not been retired. Cole Ballou has a hit. Kendall Coleman is driven in a run, so he's going to give Rockwall a chance to extend that lead. It is a 3 0 count, and there's ball four. So Nowhere near. Just like that, a pair of runners get on base here for Rockwall. You never know. Early game, early part of the game, you know, you, you got to make those runs count. I mean, the Woodlands might be hitting the ball harder, but Rockwall just been doing a better job of manufacturing runs, taking the, the walks. All that matters is that number in the runs column on the scoreboard. Rockwall's winning that battle right now. All right, so squaring around a bunt here is Brad Barnett. He was hit by a pitch in the third inning and did, did score in that inning now he for could, the 2-0 lead. He could be looking to push both those runners into scoring position at second, third with just one out, but Barnett runs very well also. So if he does drop down a bunt, the Woodlands will have to be careful and make sure that they don't allow a sacrifice to turn into a base hit. And here is the 0-1 pitch down low, and throwing it down to second. Wow, almost catching him off guard right there. Good strong throw there by Dunlap, but beating it back in pretty comfortably was Dustin Angel. He saw it all the way and had a good break back. And we've already seen Dunlap fire one ball into center field. Another one would really put his team in trouble. And there's the bun up and the third the one, base And the 1-1 pitch, yeah, bunted down towards third and getting on board. Wow, Perfect. rock wall. Look at this, base is loaded. Haven't even hit the ball of the infield yet this inning. The so. lead off C and I single, the four pitch walk, and then just a perfect bunt. He got the third baseman Pruitt to come charging in and make the play, but Hope went over to cover it as well. And I think Hope was thinking he was going to be able to go to third, but Pruitt was there, no one covered. And then it was too late to throw Barnett out, who was hustling all the way down the line of first base. Rockwall, bases loaded, nobody out here. Blue, Coleman do up. So the and the Rockwall fans are really making some noise down there. No activity yet in the Woodlands bullpen. They've got a conference out there on the mound right now. They have some 
Division I caliber arms in the bullpen. Their two starters just been so good all year long they haven't needed it, but they're in some trouble here. So the bases are loaded for Rockwall. They lead it 2 nothing. Both teams with four hits. The Woodlands with one error. And that's going to bring up number four, Cole Ballou, who had a single in the first, grounded out to second in the third. Woodlands defense in on the corners, double play depth in the middle infield. Ball grounded foul towards the Woodlands dugout. Okay, out. <laughs> they would trade a double play for a run at this point, although Ballou does run well. And the outfield, again, as we've seen throughout these ball games here, Charlie Warren playing a very shallow center field, left and right fielders playing at more traditional depth out there. Hope and going back to the stretch. Yeah, the 0-1 pitch outside. He threw the first pitch out of the windup and got the foul ball. That time he went back to the stretch right there. Now he appears to be going back to the windup. I think there's no doubt he's more comfortable out of the windup. And the 1-1 pitch, low, two balls, one strike. Well, he has got to throw a strike right here because you don't want to go. It's almost counterintuitive because if you go 3-1, you have to throw a strike because a walk brings in the run. So you don't want to go 3-1. He's got to throw a strike 2-1. Yeah, the 2-1 pitch down low. Wow, three balls, one strike. Bases loaded here for Rockwall. Cole Ballou at the plate. Kendall Coleman, their best hitter, batting over 400 on deck. Ballou. Rockwall, a chance to really open this game up. Ballou with that big home run yesterday. And the pitch to Blue fouled off again towards the Woodlands dugout. So now, full count, bases juice, nobody out. You know, if this was any other situation, if you didn't have the bases loaded, you could almost try to put some runners in motion right here, but can't really do that with the bases full. 3-2 pitch to Cole Ballou, swung on, hit towards second, and he cannot come up with it. A run is going to score. The first baseman, Chris Andritzos, had come all the way over, might have actually got in his way and prevented the second baseman from seeing the ball well. That's they Luke Shirley. They scored that an infield hit in an RBI. I think they made the right call right there. If Andritzos gets it, he might be able to, to pop up and come home. But Ballou running very well. There was no way they were going to get him at first base. And with Andritzos not being able to make the play, Shirley was almost out in right field by the time he got to that ball. So a run scores on the play, 3-0 Rockwall. Their best hitter, Kendall Coleman, at the plate now with the bases loaded and nobody out. This is game two of a best of three game series. The Woodlands won last night 12-5. Rockwall trying to even things up here in game two. Third game would be following this one if necessary. And Coleman, he's their best hitter coming in, but he does not have a base knock so far in this series. He is 0 for 5, reached on an error and scored a run last night, drove in a run earlier this game with a ground ball out, but he has yet to get it going. So two balls, no strikes to Kendall Coleman. He laces this one to right. That's going to bring in at least one run. Here comes another run. And just like that, Rockwall increases their lead to five to nothing. Good piece of hitting right there by Kendall Coleman. Got a pitch he could handle, just turned on that ball and drilled it into right field. A solid single out into right center field. So the right fielder had a long way to go. They sent Barnett all the way around. How about Brad Barnett? Three runs scored out of the leadoff spot today. He's reached on an error, been hit by pitch, and has a bunt single. And another conference out there on the mound for the Woodlands. They've got some activity in the bullpen now. But it is the wheels have come unglued here for Carter Hope. Boy, there's something about the fifth inning. Rockwall really likes <laughs> these late inning rallies. Yeah, they scored three runs yesterday in the fifth inning. Even had two in the sixth. They lead it right now 5-0, but as we saw last night, no lead is safe against the Woodlands, no question about it. A leadoff ground ball just between the third baseman and the shortstop to start the inning, a four-pitch walk, a bunt, then an infield single. That was the first really, truly hard-hit ball of the inning was Kendall Coleman. He's now driven in three runs today, so he's rebounded nicely. So Carson Childers steps up to the plate now. 
You hear the Rockwall fans shaking those yellow jacket ball bearings. <laughs> and Carson steps back out. He was hit by a pitch in the first. Ground ball out to shortstop his in, last time. The Woodlands would love that. Chance to turn two. And the first pitch to Childers. Low ball one. So the two aces for the Woodlands, the guys who have been their workhorses all year long, Ryan Burnett and Carter Hope, both struggling mightily out here on the turf of UFCU Dishfalk Field. Burnett, five runs allowed yesterday. Hope, five runs and counting today. Difference was 10 strikeouts yesterday, though. Uh, kind of bailing himself out of some of that trouble was Ryan Burnett with the 10 Ks. Yeah, Hope only four of them today, and he has gotten him. Burnett only walked one hitter. Hope has walked one, but he's hit a couple, thrown a wild pitch. 1-0 pitch to Carson Childers. This hit towards center. This might bring in a run, though. The center fielder pulling it down, Charlie Warren. And there is a play at the plate. It's a bit too high as the runner scores Cole Ballou. So Ballou is in safely. And moving up to second on the play is Kendall Coleman. So doing the job there. A six-run lead now for Rockwall. I don't think they had much of a chance to get Ballou. I mean, he's the left fielder. He's got some good wheels. He was hustling all the way from third on the tag up. But that allowed Kendall Coleman to slip into second base on that throw. And now another base hit is going to bring them another run. And you don't have the double play option anymore. You know, it's the little things in baseball. You know, that ball definitely should have been cut off and held into second. But you can't cut off something that's, too, that's thrown too high. There's a base hit towards left. And Coleman's coming around third. He's going to try to score on the play, and he's in there safely. Moving down to second, but out at second base is the batter. And that was Garrett Moon being tagged out at second, but not before he drives in the seventh run of the game. If they didn't cut that throw off, I think Coleman was dead meat at home plate right there. But heads up job by Dunlap, turning the ball around and firing it back out to the second baseman. Shirley, who looked like he was in another collision out there to make the play. And it looks like Coach Eastman is out talking to our second base umpire, Mark Belecta. I'm not really sure what he's trying to talk about here. Pretty cut and dry play out at second. Could be that there maybe maybe he thought the runner left too soon from third, possibly. Well, the one to tag up, he scored from second on a single out there. And the second baseman is talking to first base umpire Jerry Johnson. Maybe they're thinking that Garrett Moon might have went in a little too hard, a little too aggressively there. But regardless, Rockwall blowing it open here. Now a seven-run lead here in the top of the fifth. Woodland, the Woodlands will still get three more at-bats, but they're in quite a hole. Yeah, Mark Boletka, the second base umpire out there. There's a reason why... Ron went out there to talk to him, so probably the situation, trying to see about how hard the Rockwall runner Moon came into second base. Nonetheless, Garrett Moon was out, so nobody on board now, two outs. But the damage has been done. Five runs already here in the top of the fifth. We'll see if Chris Glover can keep it going. And he's hit in the back. So Chris Glover headed to first. After being walked in the fourth, he's hit in the fifth, and that'll bring up Nick Lutzel. Third batter that Carter Hope has plunked in this ball game. He is really struggling with his control. He's missing with a lot of his pitches. He's falling behind a lot of the hitters there. Only the one walk. So you could say, ah, well, he's only issued one free pass, but he's still putting runners on and putting himself in bad counts. This is the ninth batter to bat this inning. Nick Lutzel steps up, grounder foul. Just foul of the third base bag. Lutzel struck out looking in the fourth inning and struck out in the second, so he's due. That wide open stance there. Lutzel, the only batter for Rockwall, did not reach base today. Glover on it first. Here's the ground ball hit towards third. It's going to be a long throw to first, but nicely done by the third baseman, Josh Pruitt. And that is the final out of the inning, but not before Rockwall Puts up a five spot on the board. Very impressive. Took advantage of all types of situations. Did have four hits in the inning. Had a batter who was hit. 
Had a walk, had a sack fly, had a little bit of everything. Rockwall leads it 7 0 as we now move into the bottom of the fifth inning. You're watching us here on the Legacy Sports Network, FoxSportsSouthwest.com. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Gerald Burke. And I'm Morgan Burke. I graduated from the Wilderness High School in 1998. I played football and I ran track there. Morgan and I are lawyers. We office at 24 Waterway, suite number 660 in the Woodlands. I was a former prosecutor here in Montgomery County. Now I handle the criminal work at our office. I've been practicing for more than 30 years. If you have a legal concern, contact us at 713-862-7766 or check us out at thehometownlawyer.com. And as always, go Highlanders. Yes, sir. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Welcome back to UFCU Dishfalk Field here in the capital city of Texas where Rockwall leads the Woodlands seven to nothing. This is game two, a best of three game series. The Woodlands won last night 12-5. Rockwall up big now, seven nothing as we move into the bottom of the fifth inning. Remember game three, We'll follow this one right here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com. The Woodlands trying to find a way to make sure there's not a game three, but they've got their work cut out for them right now, down seven to nothing. And up to the plate will be Colby Brown. It's the 8-9-1 spots. That's the spots that Rockwell used last inning to have that big offensive explosion. You know, Counting this as an aggregate like they do in, in soccer scores, we're tied with 12 runs from both of these teams. The ball yanked foul down the left field line. And Rockwall has now scored in five different innings, five of the 12 where they have batted. The Woodlands has had one really huge inning, and that's been it. And the 2-1 pitch fouled off, so the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. I mean, you could probably make the argument that overall, Rockwall has just been a better team in this series. They just had one really bad inning. The 2-2 pitch, swung on, hit foul. Count remains 2-2 to Colby Brown. Luke Shirley on deck, who had a single earlier in the game. And he'll be followed by Hill and Warren, who also had a single. Arguably been the most productive today, this, this part of the order. And there's a ball laced into left center. And with the beat on it is the left fielder. Nice job there by Cole Ballou. Last two innings, the Woodlands have gotten a couple of hits in each of them. But in the third inning, they did it after there were two outs. Last inning, they got a one-out single and then a single with two outs and a runner on base. So they haven't strung anything together early in the innings. And both times when they've had two runners on and two outs, they have not been able to plate them. So that will bring up Luke Shirley. Shirley with that single in the third inning. It is only at bat. There's a strike. There's an infield single. He went back over the pitcher's head. Adam's glove got a piece of it. The second baseman reeled it in, but unable to make any kind of play after the ball had been slowed down. The 0-1 pitch to Shirley. Strike two. So Case and Adams up quickly now. 0-2 on Luke Shirley. Of course, the Woodlands scored 12 runs yesterday in the sixth inning. 17 players came to bat, so they know they can do it. Ball one with it low. It's a mental thing. You got to know there is no such insurmountable lead for your team. I'm sure that's what the Woodlands is thinking right now. They were down 3 0 yesterday, came back, won 12 to 5. But they've got to start one batter at a time. This ball grounded to short and over to first, making a nice play there is Dustin Angel. So two quick outs here in the fifth inning. Well, and for the Woodlands, they do have to start thinking possibly about that third game. Do you leave Carter Hope out there even if he continues to struggle? 
The first base umpire is having some words with the Woodlands dugout, it looks like. And our the third base coach is heading all the way over to, I guess, calm his team down. Yeah, they're discussing things right now. And I don't think the Ron, fans are starting to give it to the umpires as well. Ron Eastman looking at his dugout saying, guys, calm down. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that was about. That was clearly an out, an easy 6-3 put out. There's no controversy. But we heard Coach Eastman talk before the game. You know, he had to keep some pitchers possibly ready if there was a game three out there. And if there is a game three, which right now it sure appears there will be, Rockwall's going to have all the momentum. So it is 7-0, Rockwall leads two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And you know, maybe maybe Eastman and the, and the Woodlands Highlanders are slowing things down. Maybe see if they can't change up the pace a little bit here. Trying to fire themselves up in the meantime. I mean, stranger things have happened. <laughs> well, here's their third time through the order, Hill and Warren. He has one of their four base hits. They need a spark, there's no question. There's a ball. <laughs> That was the old 58-foot pitch. <laughs> Bouncing in that orange field turf in front of the plate, skipping over the catcher's left shoulder. You know, the Woodlands, they're 18-2 in neutral site games. These teams, both these teams have played a lot of games in neutral sites, no question about it. Rockwall was 7-0 in neutral site games before last night. You get into the postseason, you've got to pick places in between. You know, these teams have been affected with travel as well. They've had games where there's been some long one, two hour rain delays. I know that Rockwall had that situation with Klein Collins where they had to move the location. And that's always tough to pack up all the fans and move to. This one on the outside corner and that's a walk. Four pitch walk right there. Hill and Warren, good eye laying off a couple of close ones. So maybe this is the spark the Woodlands needs. Well, Charlie this, Warren steps up. At this point, they just need to get at least a run. You know, get something on that scoreboard and get a little bit of momentum. There's no question. They've hit the ball hard. Just been right at a rock wall player pretty much all day long. Hard but out. They put those fielders out there in those positions for a reason. There's a lot of space to cover in the outfield. But you know, Rockwell has done a, a better job of kind of manufacturing their runs today. They've just taken advantage of what the pitcher's given them, whether it's being hit by a pitch, a walk, infield singles, stealing bases. They've done a nice job of putting these seven boards on the seven runs on the board without a lot of powerful hits. And then last inning, they really kind of combined it. We saw a hit batter, we saw the infield bunt single the walk, but then they backed it up with the good solid base knocks. Another one, he's Adams is just missing here with these last couple of pitches. He looks to be getting a little frustrated out there on the mound. The Rockwall fans giving our home plate umpire a little bit of grief. And Coach Payne heading out there to talk there. He knows they're up 7-0, but he knows how quickly the game unraveled last night when he had his ace on the hill. And he wants to calm Case and Adams down. He's pitched a great game so far. He Got into trouble the last couple of innings with the hits, but managed to escape. You got a seven run lead. Your defense has been playing great behind you. Let's keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, maybe that little kind of that timeout on the field's kind of taking Case Adams out of his rhythm. You do hear that occasionally. You know, pitchers get into a rhythm. Sometimes the other team wants to disrupt that rhythm. Ball grounded up towards short. And firing it over to first is the shortstop for the final out of the inning. Dustin Angels had a great game. He's been phenomenal. So a walk, but it doesn't do any damage as the Woodlands trails 7-0 going into the top of the sixth inning. Rockwall comes at the bat when we return here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com, powered by the Legacy Sports Network. Our innermost desire is the force that inspires us to find outright delight. With any size icy cold Coca-Cola, soft drink, or sweet tea for just a dollar. Hey, thanks for
Thanks for the VIP treatment, Kerry. Thanks for saving me all that money on my car insurance, Robert. That's State Farm's discount double check. We dig through your policy, find any hidden savings. That's funny. Before every home game, I used to do an Ivy double check. Really? Yeah, people drop all kinds of stuff in here. Old cell phone, French horn. Andre Dawson? What year is it? Let State Farm find your hidden savings with a discount double check. Caught it! Woo! Get to a better state. State Farm. A new pitcher on the hill for the Woodlands here in the sixth inning. Braxton Markle, the senior left-handed pitcher, also plays infield wearing number one. He comes into the ball game with his team trailing seven to nothing to Rockwall. This is game two in the best of three game series between Rockwall and the Woodlands. The Highlanders won last night 12-5, but they're down big time right now here in the sixth inning in a seven inning game, seven nothing. Markle making his third appearance has a one and one record at six earned run average and two and a third innings pitch. Allowed five hits, three runs, two of them earned, walked one and struck out two on the season. And clearly this is Coach Eastman just trying to get these last six outs. And I think he's probably accepted the fact that we're going to a third ball game right here and he wants to save all of his other arms out there. Well, it's a fine line. You have to make that decision along the way. Even Rockwall last night had to come to the real realization that after giving up 12 runs in one inning, there probably wasn't going to be much of a chance of winning that game, so no need in burning up extra arms. So sixth inning here, stepping up to the plate for Rockwall to get things started. Wearing number eight, Dustin Angel. Started it last inning with the single, grounded it between third and short. Came around to score the first of the five runs. And the 1-0 pitch to Angel High. Two balls, no strikes. Carter Hope in line for the loss in this game. Five innings pitched. He allowed seven hits, seven runs. Six of them were earned. Walked one, struck out four, but he threw a wild pitch and he hit three batters. Ball fouled off. Two balls, one strike. You know, as a team, the Yellow Jackets are batting 326 coming into this series, 424 on base percentage. They're just kind of a scrappy bunch. You know, they, they may not hit for power. Their leading home run hitter has only four home runs, and that's Kendall Coleman. But they'll beat you to death with singles and bunts. and <laughs> Runners on base. Well, they with the book Moneyball, they did a study about on base percentage and slugging percentage because obviously a home run more valuable than a single. But if you have a perfect on base percentage, you never make an out. So getting runners on base is more important than just hitting it hard. And that's exactly what they do. They get a runner on base right here off Markle. So Dustin Angel on board with a walk. That'll bring up Skyler Bean. He walked and scored last inning, also grounded out to second. Bottom of the order there is what got it going for Rockwell, the 8-9 spots getting on base, each of them scoring a run and turning over that lineup, getting back to the big boys up top. Kind of fitting that Skyler Bean would come up to the plate. Kind of talking about the, uh, the slugging percentages and what Billy Bean was able to do with the Oakland A's in Moneyball. Scott, I don't think there's a relation to Billy Bean, but you never know. <laughs> it is spelled differently, so. <laughs> So inside. Braxton Markle being very, very deliberate out there on the mound with his follow through, gets the ball back from his catcher, steps back off of the rubber. He is taking his time. Pitching out of the windup here with Dustin Angel at first. There's a strike right down the alley. So two balls, one strike. He's thrown eight pitches now, just two of them for strikes. And the 2-1 pitch to Skyler Bean, swung on hit towards center. And drifting back is the center fielder. Kind of had to hang on there for a second. Was Charlie Warren out there making sure 
Then the ball play tricks on you sometimes. That, that's a couple times for the outfielders for both teams. It looked like they've had a beat on a ball and then have had to hustle pretty quickly. We saw Kendall Coleman really have to come in on a ball that looked like it was hit harder than it was earlier in the game. That ball just kind of kept carrying. Here's Barnett, and he has been quite a pest. He's put the ball in play once. It was a bunt. It went about 40 feet, but he scored three runs. That's exactly what you want out of your leadoff, man. So Brad Barnett, impressive at the plate. He's made some big plays at third today also. One out, runner on first for Rockwall. This one, strike one, grabs that corner. Yeah, a wide corner right there with our umpire set up on the inside. That's Rick Miller behind the plate. He's done a nice job overall today behind the plate. Now he's called a very consistent ball game there. It's been a tight strike zone, but it's been the same for both teams. And that curveball is not where it hits the catcher's mid, of course. It's where it crosses the plate. It had a real late break on it, so just a bit inside as it was crossing the plate. One ball, one strike. There's a strike. So one, two now. See Hill and Warren kind of occasionally comes into your, your, your view there, the shortstop. Could be a possible stolen base opportunity. We'll see. No, not this time. Strike three. Barnett didn't like that one there. That outside corner grew a little bit wider in that at bat. But your ball, your ball team's up 7-0. You've had a great game. You're playing good defense there. Just head on back to the dugout and get ready to go play defense. So that'll bring up Cole Ballou. Has a pair of singles today, a stolen base. 7-0 ball game, Rockwall. They've got a runner on first with two outs. There's a strike. Well, that, uh, that outside corner getting... A little further outside here as we're going along. Maybe Rick Miller is interested in getting this ball game over. He says, hey, man, we're gonna, we may have to play two games here. <laughs> ball well, grounded towards first. There's a foul. Well, he'd be out in the field for the next one. Maybe he just wants to get all the heavy gear off. <laughs> <laughs> You've done some umpiring yourself, right? I have. It is. Uh, it gets pretty warm back there. The 0-2 pitch to Cole Ballou inside. <laughs> he he's, tried. He's trying to take it off the, the well, calf. Well, he was trying to get hit at a spot where it wouldn't really hurt all that badly and still get hit. The ball kind of broke there towards the last minute, towards the plate. Big lead over at first by Dustin Angel. The 1-2 pitch to Ballou fouled back. He's got that lead, but... That lefty pitcher, that good move, he's keeping him close, using a slide step. Something we see a lot here at Dishfog Field, not a lot of the fans will sit in the lower bowl because the sun will beat on you. They like to be under that shaded area where it's pretty full up here today in the shaded area, but not so much in the lower bowl. A little bit high with that one. Good job by Ballou. He started his swing, but able to check it in time. So two balls, two strikes to Cole Ballou, really crowding that plate right on the chalk. And looks like he was hit by the he pitch there. In, yep. Fourth hit batter by the Woodlands pitching staff. And that brings slugging Kendall Coleman to the plate. Yeah, such a fine line right there. Did he lean in too far to that ball? Even, it might have even caught a little bit of the inside part of the plate. But you never would know, so. <laughs> so Coleman steps up. Has a single. Also had an RBI ground out to short. Oh, liner to third. And making the stab for the final out of the inning is the third baseman for the Woodlands, and that's Josh Pruitt. He's had a great game. That's it for Rockwall here in the sixth inning. So we move to the bottom of the sixth. And the Yellow Jackets still leading the Highlanders 7-0. We'll be right back here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com.
If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. First Victoria, the oldest independent bank in Texas, one of our proud sponsors here on the Legacy Sports Network. Rockwall leading the Woodlands 7-0 here as we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. Of course, this was the inning. The Woodlands scored 12 runs yesterday, plating 17 batters. Well, and they've got their three, four, five spots due up. This, this core came up in the fourth inning. Andrizzo's got a one-out single. Josh Saw added one, but two on, two out. They couldn't capitalize. This is Alex Dunlap here, and he didn't like that pitch. Gets a cold he's, strike one. He's been robbed twice. A couple of hard hit line drives, once to left, once to third. There's strike two. Jason so, Adams still dealing out there. So an 0-2 count to Dunlap. He's going to have to get that bat off his shoulder. There we go. Fouling this one back. Case Adams, Case on Adams coming at the batters now. Of course, up 7-0. You can do that as a pitcher. Big difference pitching with a big lead or not. A little, a little bit low. It was close. Of course, Dunlap is a catcher, so he, he's got a pretty good idea where the strike zone is. Adams working fast. There's a ball, two balls, two strikes. By the way, in case you're wondering if there is a game three, that would be at 4 o'clock today, so we'll wrap this one up quickly and come back for you at 345. With your pregame show, the McDonald's pregame show. So Dunlap now has worked the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ball four. So a nice job by Dunlap earning the walk right there. Laid off a couple of tough pitches when he had two strikes on him. And that could be the start of something here. they going to get a pinch runner out there, number 16, for Dunlap. Yeah, for the Woodlands, that will be Brandon Manger. He is a senior. Here's Andritzos. Sharp single back up the box, his last at bat. And this one low, one ball, no strikes. Runner on first base. And this one swung on, hit towards right. It's going to be foul. One ball and one strike. So with the runner on first, nobody out here. One ball and one strike for the big Chris Andritzos. Had a single in the fourth inning, flew out to right in the second inning, was three for four yesterday, a couple of doubles and a single, has hit the ball hard the entire series, fouls this one back, one ball, two strikes now. They just need base runners at this point, they don't, they can't get it all back with one swing right now. Gritzos really got that rally going yesterday, and this one right up the middle, it squeaks through for a single. So Andritzos on first, Dunlap on second. Still nobody out. What is it about this sixth inning? <laughs> Regardless of how this weekend turns out, Chris Andritzos has done his team proud. Five for seven right now. Two runs scored and obviously a chance to add to that. Three runs driven in, but Woodland's got to keep it going right here. They just they need more base runners. I mean, those two runs out there are nice, but they need a lot more. Never has a seven-run lead felt so insecure. <laughs> well, and you know it's playing on the back of those rock wall fielders, and you know it's in the back of Casey Adams' mind. They've got another arm up in their bullpen just in case. Playing Gillespie batting 357, the 0-1 pitch. Ball one, one ball, one strike. 
Adams is just missing with some of these pitches here, but the Highlanders batters really shown a discerning eye. Trying to work that count. I think they feel like they could maybe take a page out of Rockwall's game plan here today. Laced up the middle, and that's going to drop in for a single. But holding up is the runner. That was a great deep by Kendall Coleman. He had his glove up like he had a beat on that. Dunlap was frozen because if he keeps running and the ball is caught, he's easily doubled off. Andritzos had a better angle, saw that it was going to fall in, so he didn't get caught up with it. But Coleman might have saved a run right there. So the bases are loaded now for Josh Shaw with Gillespie single to center. Bases are loaded. And the pitch to Shaw up the middle. This could be two. The flip to second for one over to first. Double play. A run scores on the play, but no question, Rockwall will take that situation all day. What a turn right there. Great dive by the shortstop, Angel. It looked like he flipped it with his glove and a very strong throw by his Keystone partner, Skyler Bean. And that is just huge. Suddenly, bases loaded, no out, turns into two outs. Yeah, that's a rally killer, even though they do pick up the run there. Well, who cares about the run? Now you're only up six instead of seven. That's still quite comfortable. And let's call it what it is. I mean, Josh Shaw hit that ball well right at the middle, had a single earlier in the game. It just happened to be just a, a great play there by Dustin Angel. So two balls, no strike now. Two outs. Bottom of the sixth inning. Woodland's trying to rally. Somehow that ball grabbing the inside corner of the plate. Sure, it looked like he thought that ball was going to hit him. So it's two balls and one strike. One ball, two strikes, actually. Our umpire corrected the scoreboard. There we go. This ball laced out towards right, but camping under it is the right fielder, Nick Lutzel. And the, despite having the bases loaded with nobody out, the Woodlands can only manage one run. So we move to the top of the seventh. Rockwall leading it 7-1 in game two of this best of three game series. We'll be right back. The time is now for live video highlights of your school's march to excellence. New sets up inside of the pitch. High fly to left. It's up, it's deep, and it's gonna be gone! Legacy Sports Network brings you high quality HD video broadcasted by the best in the business. Handoff, Adam Taylor lunges to the end zone, touchdown. This is the most, one of the most exciting things. With all the runs, hits, scores, and more, we're building a legacy one game at a time. I appreciate it, Gerald. You guys at Legacy do an unbelievable job. Join us on pay-per-view or video live streaming your favorite high school and college athletics at LegacySportsNetwork.com. Legacy Sports Network is going to be bringing this presentation to your home. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Fog Field, where we're even in the hit column, but it's Rockwall 7-1 in the column that counts the most, the runs. Woodland's just trying to escape this ball game here. I mean, they'll have one last crack at it in the bottom of the seventh, but barring another miraculous inning like we saw last night in the sixth, Rockwall's going to come in and steal this game in pretty impressive fashion, and we're going to have a winner-take-all game about half an hour after this one wraps up. So Braxton Markle back on the hill again, the senior left-handed pitcher. And the first batter for Rockwall here in the top of the seventh inning in a seven-inning game is number nine, Carson Childers. And the pitch to Childers, fouled back to the right. These two teams go through a lot of baseballs, don't they? <laughs> we saw this last night, too, a lot of foul balls. Childers emphasizing the scrappy approach of the Rockwall offense. He's officially 0 for 1 in this ballgame. He's hit by pitch, has an RBI with a sack fly. That one outside. One ball, one strike. 
Rockwall doing a nice job there in the fifth inning, putting up a big crooked number at five, looking looming large. And the 1-1 pitch outside, two balls, one strike. Braxton Markle throwing very hard out there from front left side. Just seems to be an endless array of hard-throwing Woodlands pitchers. And the 2-1 pitch grounded towards third. And picking it up and firing to first is the third baseman, Josh Pruitt. Pruitt's had about four putouts today. He's done well stepping in for Carter Hope. Be interesting to see if he gets the call in the third game, assuming we get there, because Carter Hope played a great third base last night. But his arm might be a little bit sore after all the pitches he threw. So that brings up Garrett Moon. Moon had a single in the first, RBI single. Ball grounded up towards short, but that's Hill and Warren. He fires to first, two outs. And Chris Glover will step up to the plate with nobody on and two outs. Glover talking to his manager, Jeff Payne, making sure they've got the right sign. As he steps up on the left side of the batter's box. Check that. Back over to the right side. Had to pick up a bat over there. <laughs> No bat boys in the high school level. <laughs> Maybe some home games you are occasionally. Your own. Yeah. <laughs> and the pitch to the DH. Ball one. Clever walked in the fourth, was hit by a pitch in the fifth. In that first inning, he actually grounded over to the third baseman, Pruitt, in an unassisted. Step on third, then he fired it over to first. So, Glover seeing if he can add to Rockwall's lead up 7-1. Haven't seen a home run in this game. Had a massive shot last night by Cole Ballou to center. And taking a home run cut there was Glover, but comes up empty this time. Markle, gutsy pitch right there, throwing his slider on 2-0. He's fallen behind almost every hitter he has faced so far, but He's been able to come back and make it work. So the 2-1 pitch to Chris Glover. Outside, good pop of the glove there, though. So 3-1, two outs here. Rockwell has only out hit the Woodland 7-6, but they lead 7-1. have done a nice job once they've got their runners on base of moving them around. Grounder to third, Pruitt picks it up, fires to first. And there is the third out of the inning. So three up, three down. We move now to the bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance for the Woodlands here in game two, trailing seven to one. We'll be right back here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com, powered by the Legacy Sports Network. Hello, I'm Gerald Burke. And I'm Morgan Burke. I graduated from the Woodlands High School in 1998. I played football and I ran track there. Morgan and I are lawyers. We office at 24 Waterway Suite, number 660 in the Woodlands. I was a former prosecutor here in Montgomery County. Now I handle the criminal work at our office. I've been practicing for more than 30 years. If you have a legal concern, contact us at 713-862-7766 or check us out at thehometownlawyer.com. And as always, go Highlanders! Yes, sir! Lucy. Lucy loves to shop. Lucy also loves to save. Luckily, Lucy can do both with her new First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card. Not only can Lucy save on that new dress, she can also get those new shoes, too. Apply today and take advantage of everything a First Community Credit Union Platinum Credit Card has to offer, including a 12-month 2.99% APR introductory rate. You really can shop and save. First Community Credit Union, official credit union of the Houston Texans. And welcome back to UFCU Dish Falk Field. The Woodlands Highlanders trailing 7-1. to one. And there's a scoop by the shortstop. Nicely done by Dustin Angel. But it looks like he 
pull the runner off the bag with that errant throw there. He was just too deep in the hole right there. Colby Brown booking it up that line. Angel, good strong throw, but Brown just beat it. Clean infield single. Yeah, Brown really motoring down that line. So he gets things off to a good start here for the Woodlands on first base. He's always a threat to steal, of course, and Luke Shirley steps up now. Big lead over there by Colby Brown that first time. We'll see if he continues to do that. I'd be very surprised if he was running here in this situation because they've only got three outs and they need six runs. They cannot afford to lose a man on the base pass. And really, he's a meaningless run at this point. So trailing 7-1, ball swung on, fouled off to the right. Little number. This is a pinch hitter for Luke Scherr. This is number 14 for the Woodlands. Yeah, and that would be Casey Schneider. Casey Schneider in the ball game now. Schneider batting from the right-handed position and looking to drive this ball into the outfield. Swan, strike three. So Schneider goes down swinging. And that will bring in Hillen Warren, the leadoff batter. Case and Adams only four strikeouts in the ball game. All of them clustered among the seven, eight, nine hitters. First pitch to Warren is a strike. Got a single and a walk in three trips. Tell you, Case and Adams, he doesn't mess around, does he? He just goes right no. after the hitters. Great job by the senior. He was on the JV last year. Had a big growth spurt. There's a ground to the first, and he touches the bag. No play at second, but they do get the sure out at first. So nice job right there by the first baseman for Rockwall, Carson Childers, and that will bring up Charlie Warren. He's the Ward. last hope. He's hit the ball hard all three times today, twice lined out to center field. Last time up, hard hit ground ball, but right at the shortstop. Oh, the Rockwall fans on their feet. They want to end this game. Charlie Warren fouling this one back. A lot of little red stickers on the back of that helmet. Almost looks like something you'd see at Ohio State. <laughs> you do well, you get a little sticker. They're going to need a lot of well right now, down 7-1 in this game. Ground ball to short. This should do it. Over to first, and Dustin Angel Helps Rockwall force a game three, seven to one year final. Rockwall defeats the Woodlands here in game two. Hugs all around here for the orange and black of Rockwall. Game three will come at you 30 minutes from now. We'll be right back to break, break down this one here in just a moment here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com, powered by the Legacy Sports Network. Hey, thanks for the VIP treatment here today. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers. That State Farm agent said she helps people. What do you do? I play football. That's not a job. Uh, well. Did you save my dad hundreds with a discount double check? No, but I was MVP last year. Mr. Hubble says trophies are for people with self-esteem issues. Who's Mr. Hubble? That's Rod Hubble. No, it is not. For savings, we're best in class. Hey, Roger! This got double check! Get to a better state. State Farm. CBO, cheddar, bacon, onion. Yeah, it's uh, it's three Mendes. <laughs> three Mendes. Three Mendes. Say hello to McDonald's new. Three Mendes. CBO. Smooth cheddar, crispy bacon, grilled onions on the Angus Third Pounder or premium chicken sandwiches. CBO, the simple joy of tremendous. Yeah.
Welcome back to UFCU Dishfog Field. They were even in the hit column, 7-7, but not on the scoreboard. Rockwall wins game two, 7-1 over the Woodlands. Jeff Power and Cameron Couchoir joining you here in the post-game show. And very impressive right there by Rockwall, taking advantage of every situation they could offensively. With only the seven hits, did manage to get those seven runs. Well, it's also about when you get those hits. They got two in the first inning, scored a run. Five in the fifth inning, scored five runs. They scratched out another one in the second. The other five innings, they did not get a hit, but it just didn't matter. They made them count and maximize those runners and those hits that they did get. Yeah, you talked about this kind of in the uh, this situation how soccer would score things. Technically, the Woodlands would be up by a run if you look at yes. it that way. But going into game three, what do you think is going to be the key to the matchup here for these two teams? Well, everything's out there for both these teams right now. It's all hands on deck, every pitcher, every position player. And, you know, who's going to step up right now? The Woodlands, aside from that one inning, they've really been not the better team at this point. Rockwall has had more chances. They've spread out their offense there. They just got an outstanding performance by Casey Adams. And Rockwall has their tail up right now. They're coming in with all the momentum in this ball game. So the Woodlands, they hit some balls hard today in this first game, but didn't get lucky out of it. You know, hopefully some of those will land in for them. For Rockwall, just keep doing what you're doing because it's been working aside from the sixth inning last night. Well, and let's keep in mind, with that 12-run sixth inning where 17 batters came to the plate, they did take a dent into that Rockwall pitching rotation, whereas the Woodlands, they haven't pitched as many pitchers. That could be no. a factor in Game 3. The Woodlands have only used three arms at this point. Rockwall, we saw them use four just in that sixth inning last night. <laughs> but then Case and Adams in this first game giving them a complete game. That's huge for them, so they should still have some guys on hand. But now at this point also, you're talking about each team's third starter. This isn't your best starter. There's a reason he is your third starter out there. So which guy is going to step up and use this as a chance to show, hey, I'm just as good as those other two guys? Hey, my player of the game in that one, Case and Adams, no doubt about it. Absolutely. He was on the JV last year, pitched really well this year as a senior starter here, did a great job, did give up the seven hits, but only allowed one run. He gave up those seven hits, but also he scattered those around. There were only four innings that he gave up hits, never more than two in an inning. He had only a couple of at-bats when the uh, the Highlanders players actually had runners in scoring positions, and he made the outs. It's when you get the outs, when you get the hits, not just getting outs and getting hits. All right, for Cameron Couchoir, I'm Jeff Power. So right now the series all tied up at one apiece. We'll have game three that will decide which one of these two teams will come back to Austin next week and play for a Class 5A state championship. We'll be right back in about 20 minutes. Stick around, folks. We will remain online right here on FoxSportsSouthwest.com and bring you the next game here in just a bit.